about tomorrow's uh, game? How do you think it's going to be a hard game for Latvians? Well, it'll be a hard game for both teams, without question. And uh, I compliment Latvia on the great job that they've done thus far in the World Cup. Even though they, you know, they're missing uh, Porzingis, who's, you know, just a tremendous, tremendous uh, player. But the story behind that for me is the fact that Chris Stapps decided to come and be with his team, even though he's not playing. Yanis Strelnik's also. And Yanis Strelnik's did the same thing, you know, and, and that Yanis Strelnik's also played for me, you know, uh, in the Olympiacos in Greece. Another one of the guys that I really appreciate. Uh, from Latvian basketball, from Latvia, you know, and guys like that, 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 that's what makes a program, guys that are willing to create a culture and have the character to send a message to their teammates and to the people that follow and love basketball in Latvia. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a great thing to see and I, and I respect them. Leģendārais basketbola treneris Davids Blats ar Kanādas izlases kā konsultants darbojas jau trešo gadu. 2019. gadā viņam diagnosticēta multiplā skleroza. Par spītām Eirolīgas čempions joprojām darbojas basketbolā un piedalās Kanādas izlases ceļā pēc vēsturiski pirmās medaļas pasaules kausā. Spēl pret Latviju viņam būs īpaša, jo bijis treneris Jānim Strelniekam un Dairim Bērtānam. Tāpēc Atiņš strādājas kopā ar Ainaru Bagatski. You work together with Ainaru Bagatski, so you get to know some, some facts about Latvia. How do you like Team Latvia so far in this tournament? Well, not only do I, did I work with uh, Ainaru, who is also one of my favorite people, and uh, I've actually lectured in Latvia about basketball at, at, at Ainaru's uh, uh, clinic for coaches. Uh, I know Latvian basketball well because I had a great Latvian player by the name of Bertans playing for me in uh, in Dachka in Turkey. We we worked together in the Euroleague, so I'm certainly a fan of uh, Latvian basketball and and Latvian Latvian people in general. Kanada, they have 40 million iedzīvotāji. No Latvijas perspektīvas skatoties, hokeja lielvalsts. Bet šīs valsts labākie basketbolisti pasaules kausā piedalās jau 14. reizi. Labākais rezultāts – sestā vieta, kas izcīnīta 1978. un 82. gadā. Iepriekšējā pasaules kausā Ķīnā kanādiešiem vien 21. vieta. Šogad komanda ir gatava cīnīties par medaļām. Un to Latvijas televīzijā apstiprināja divi kanādiešu žurnālisti, kas veido reportāžus ļoti šaurai auditorijai, jo pasaules kausa zimeļa amerikāņu sporta kartē neesot epicentrā. Back home in Latvia we have a saying when uh, Canadians uh, born with the ice hockey uh, skates on their uh, foot uh, but now as I see the can Canadian performance it looks like there is a basketball hand in a hand also. Yeah, no, uh, the Raptors have made it a huge thing in Canada, especially Toronto which is the biggest city. Um, like when they won the championship it was just crazy the the streets were wild it's kind of like Riga when uh, you guys won the bronze medal in in hockey um, in Toronto so um, it's it's just a huge sport now it's other than soccer and hockey it's probably the third biggest sport participation wise and uh, the Raptors are a big reason to that but for the Canadian men's national team it's been a bit more up and down just getting got NBA guys to, to commit and then they played and then they've lost in close fashion so um, Canada basketball hasn't really jumped up, but basketball in Canada is really big and a lot of people watch the NBA because it's so close, right? So, yeah. I am not a hockey fan at all. I actually dislike ice hockey immensely. But in 2007, at the end of 2007, me in 2008, the World Junior Hockey Championships were in Ottawa and Latvia had a goaltender named Norris Kuzins. And Norris put on a show in Ottawa, and I still remember that. And all the fans were throwing teddy bears out on the ice. And I don't know what Norris is doing these days, but I still remember him all these years later. Congratulations on your world championships this year. The, the scenes in the arena, um, it was awesome. If you compare to ice hockey, it's still the biggest sport? Yeah, hockey is definitely the biggest sport, but I'd say basketball might be the, other than soccer or, or football, 
um, is maybe the, the fastest growing sport. Everyone's playing basketball. You see hoops everywhere. If you would have been in Canada 30 years ago, you would have never seen a basketball hoop. Now you uh, drive along the streets and you see basketball hoops everywhere. Um, so it's, it's definitely a really popular sport and really growing with young people especially. Uh, so other than hockey, which is a bit more kind of maintained itself, it's not necessarily growing while basketball is really jumping up. I was in Toronto to the All-Star game yep. when Porzingis was in the rookie team and uh, also that impacted the popularity of basketball in Canada? The All-Star game? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, Drake was, I think, the, the MC at that um, and he's also taken up a big role with um, the Raptors especially. Um, the All-Star game was huge, um, of course, but I would say more the, the championship and the Raptors for until about the early 2010s were really bad. <laughs> Uh, Vince Carter was really big, and that really spawned a lot of the guys like Shea Gildas Alexander. They grew up with Vince Carter, right? Um, so those players were really uh, looked up to him. And then the Raptors got bad after Vince got traded, and really until Masai Ujiri took over about 10 years ago in 2013, they've made the playoffs, I think, eight out of the last 10 years, and the fan base has just grown. And um, basketball in Canada has just grown and the men's and women's team has been really good. The women came fourth at the World Cup uh, last year and obviously Canada I think has over 20 NBAers now. Um, so uh, it's, it's definitely a huge sport in Canada and it seems as though it's only growing. Pret Kanan tiks mēs otro reizi vēsturē. Pirmo šajā gadsimtā. Vienīgo reizi ar Ziemeļu Amerikāņiem tikāmies 1936. gada olimpiskajās spēlēs Berlīnē. Topošajiem sudraba medaļniekiem zaudējām ar 11 punktu starpību. Izcīnītais sudrabs Kanādai joprojām labākais rezultāts – piecu apļu planētas lielākajās sacensībās. Kanāda ir divkārtēja Amerikas čempionāta sudraba medaļniece – četras reizes izcīnīta bronza. Pasaules kaules ar Džakartas grupturnī noslēdzošā spēle būs cīņa par pirmo vietu grupā. Ābas komandas izcīnījušas pa divām uzvarām. Kanādiešu treneris uzskata Latviju par spēcīgāko pretinieku grupā. Yeah, very good three-point shooting team. They play fast. Um, they play extremely hard. They've shown they can compete against anybody. They've had impressive wins in the preparation, impressive wins in the two games in the World Cup. So for us, it's a big challenge, and we're very excited to face this challenge against a very good team. Like I said before, very well coached, a guy that I know personally, and I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, and with all their fans here, uh, 3 million people in the country with 3,000 fans, it's the same as this Canada would have 3 million fans here, if you do your math, so very, very exciting. What is your biggest intrigue before Team Latvia game? Well, you guys can shoot the ball, that's really good, um, and your point guard played really well last game, so if the, the worry is just are you guys going to shoot the ball really well and if it's a close game you guys have the crowd Canada doesn't necessarily have the crowd and it could get a bit nervy and I it could just where Latvia really takes control because of just the momentum the passion and everything um, I do believe Canada is a heavy favorite but uh, France was a heavy favorite and Latvia you know took took that away from them and now they're going home so uh, it will be a really good game. It will be a tough game. There's going to be a lot of um, energy in the building, I'm sure. Uh, but I, th I think Canada is probably a, a pretty big favorite, and I'd expect them to win. But you never know, and uh, maybe you know Bertans goes off or someone else for, for Latvia. So it should be a really fun game. What surprised me is, without Porzingis, just how well they've been able to play, how connected they've been able to be and how they're generating offense without that fixture in the middle of the floor. It's really impressed me on the defensive end just how much they're willing to mix things up. They're playing zone, they're playing box and one, they're, they're doing all of the things required to win any way possible. And, you know, you, you think about the France game, hanging around, hanging around, hanging around, never leading until the final minute, and then finding a way to do it. I mean, that, that, that's impressive stuff. We were leading 37 seconds in this game. Yeah, amazing, huh? Like 39 minutes and 23 seconds. 
without a lead and, and you end up knocking out a top five power. And it's not by accident. Like that's a very well coached team with a really good shooter. And in this environment, that, that can be enough to get yourself to the next round. And that's what Latvia has done. I was surprised in the practice. Uh, we came inside, it was like everything was red, a lot of people. Uh, it's like I asked uh, one of the team's member, he said 38 people, all team, uh, coaches, assistants, managers, mental, uh, uh, mental coach and, and everything. This is usually so big for Canada, like a party, music is uh, very loud, everyone is like smiling, joking, uh, head coach is uh, kicking the ball like in football. In the last five minutes of practice, yes, um, it is workmanlike. Before they did a, they did two-day practices and training camp starting August first in Toronto for a week. Then they went to Europe. They played five games in Germany and Spain. Um, when it's time to dial it up, they dial it up. When it's time to enjoy themselves, it is. And it's interesting because when Jordi Fernandez took over the first day of training camp, he told the players. If we don't have a defensive first mindset, we're doing a disservice to all of us. And the guys have bought in. You know, Canada beat France. Canada embarrassed a world power because of their defensive first mindset and what they were willing to do and how well they came on, you know, came off switches and rotations and off the pick and roll and all those kinds of things. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic where guys really enjoy one another. Like, I've been asking them, like, what have you gotten into? And they're like, play cards, probably for a lot of money. Um, play board games, hang out at the gym. They don't do much. They go on the shopping mall a couple of times, but they're actually, they want to win. And, you know, you talked about wanting to do well here. The other thing that's really important to understand about Canada basketball is that when you look at the NBA, Obviously, the United States has the most players represented by any country. But after that, it's not Spain, it's not France, it's not Argentina. Canada has the second most players by country representation in the NBA after the U.S. And these guys ha are going to big-time college schools. And their mindset is, has been up here um, for a long time. They're here to win. They're here to win a medal. Well, first of all, we have the best performance in medical team, I think, in the World Cup, in my opinion. So these guys have done a great job with preparing the nutrition, the sleep, the travel. So we've had a very good setup in our organization. And you can ask all our players. They feel fresh. They feel ready to go with rhythm. They feel strong. So for us, being physically 100% is important. If you watch us play, we play fast and physical. So. Uh, we're, in a, we're in a very good place. About Canadian mindset uh, in this pre-event press conference, I felt that we are here for the gold. Uh, that's like uh, first time ever that uh, Canadians are coming so strong and uh, to win the gold medal because you have two sixth place. Or this is even uh, before previous World Cups also, that was the same goal. I think one thing that's important to understand, this is the greatest Canadian basketball team, men's team, ever assembled, and it's not even close. Top five player in the world, Shea Gilgis Alexanders, all first team NBA, like literally a top five player in the world. He's got RJ Barrett beside him. He's got Dylan Brooks right there. He's got Lou Dort who plays such an important role in what they do. They have four FIBA players who understand this. And they've come up together, so they've known each other a long time. And they actually give a shit about one another. They're, they're, they legitimately like one another. So you have a lot of talent. You have dudes who are willing to play roles and sacrifice for one another. They mentioned they're really talented, um, and that's why. Like, it's not an accident. So I think when you think about Canadian basketball history, it's been a lot of falling on their face. But they've never had a team anywhere near as good as this and that's what makes it different. The gold medal, I mean, the way they played against France, if they play that way, I, I believe they could beat the U.S. Now, I don't know how, you never know in one game. For in Canada, the goal is to make the Olympics. They haven't made the Olympics since 2000 with Steve Nash. 
And that's the primary goal. When you talk to the players, you talk to the CEO, the GM, the goal is to make the Olympics. Um, now, they go deep, and I think the way they've been playing, they could definitely beat, win a medal or win the gold medal. But their first goal is to make the Olympics, and then the rest is almost gravy on top and, and just additive, yeah. We started the conversation talking about hockey. In neighborhoods and driveways, kids always play street hockey. Starting in the summer of 2019, there were basketball hoops popping up everywhere. Seven, eight million Canadians watched each night of the finals, the Raptors, in a country of 35 million people. Um, it wasn't just the Toronto Raptors, it became kind of Canada's team. There were, in 75 different cities all over the country, they had big outdoor parties in like community squares or the football stadium, watching it up on the Jumbotron. And basketball really took off. And so it's, it's been amazing to see if, I know the World Cup is a big deal. In North America, it's not. But if these dudes get into the Olympics and make a run at the Olympics next year, it's just going to blow up. Kanādas izlasē septiņu spēlētāju pelnu iztiku NBA, divi spēlē Spānijā, pa vienam Turcijā un Izraelā. Tāpat viens spēlētājs ir no NCAA. Līdz šī gada vasarai Kanādas izlas trenēja Nick Snurs, kurš galvenā trenera amatu pameta pēc NBA piedāvājuma. Kopš šī gada jūnija komandas galvenais treneris ir Spānis Džorģī Fernandes. Viņš ir viens no galvenā trenera asistentiem Sacramento Kings komandā. Pērni viņš kļuva par pirmo spāņu speciālistu, kas bija galvenais treneris NBA komandā. Tas pateicoties tam, ka no spēles tika izrādīts Kings galvenais treneris Mikes Browns. In three events press conference you told that on day five you'll be in the best shape going so far? Yeah, no, we're in great shape, yeah. We're ready to run, we're ready to play physical. Um, and I think if you ask all our guys, they feel great. Uh, was uh, that surprise for you that Nick Nurse chose NBA not to fight for the Google team uh, with a gold medal here in a World Cup and thinking about the, the contract ended the, till the Summer Olympics next year. I think Nick Nurse chose $40 million dollars uh, guaranteed from the Philadelphia 76ers. It's all about the money, not the medal and after that maybe more money. Yeah, I mean look, Nick's going into an impossible situation in Philadelphia with James Harden. Um, he's got a lot on his plate. It just wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to work um, because of his day job. I think that if he sat out a year, and I was wondering if he was going to because the Raptors still owed him eight or nine million dollars on his contract. I'm like, well, okay, if Nick doesn't coach in the NBA next year and just takes the money, he'll be back with the national team. But once he took that job, it's just too much to do. What I hear is that the 76ers did not want him to be the coach of Canada. So he basically worked out a deal to, to really try to get the best possible coach and that became Jordi Fernandez, who's the associate co coach in Sacramento. So I don't, I, for Nick Nurse, I don't, he didn't really step down because he wanted to, I would say. It, it was more just the NBA came and said, or the 76ers said, hey, you're, you just signed a contract with us. Yeah, you're not going to be uh, doing uh, the FIBA World Cup. So um, I, it wasn't on bad terms by no means, and they have a great relationship. He has a great relationship with Canada basketball. I was talking to Mike Bartlett. All is good. So there's, it's not, it wasn't a, a bad breakup or anything. Yeah, but crazy. This is a very big tournament. There's a very good squad and group of uh, guys that want to achieve the gold medal. That will help him maybe to get a better contract as a coach. Yeah, uh, in, in the NBA, it's, it's just different, right? You look at the U.S., they have a great team, but it's not all their stars. I don't think any of the players on the team had ever played for the U.S. before. So there's a lot of money in the NBA. Um, there's a lot of push and shove to, to, to not go to these events, really. Um, just for Team Canada, right, Jamal Murray didn't go. I'm sure he wanted to, but uh, I don't think the Denver Nuggets wanted him to go. Nikola Jokic, sorry, didn't go as well for the Nuggets. So a lot of these NBA teams have a lot of push and power over players and coaches to, to not let them go. You're technically not allowed to, but they can uh, recommend it strongly, uh, or strongly, sorry. So um, I, I, for me, that's probably what happened with, with Nick Nurse.
you as a Spanish coach, a possibility to get uh, to Team Spain, uh, what this game would be for you? Yeah, I'm a Canadian coach and I, you know, I'm trying to uh, get 100% Canadian. I, like you said, I was born in Spain. I learned a lot in Spain. Uh, and once we move on to the next round, I'll be excited and I'll be ready to prepare against those guys, which, as you know, one of the best programs in the world. So uh, we'll, we'll be ready for that challenge when it comes. Honestly, our goal is to win every game we play. Um, we know to achieve our ultimate goal is eight games. And that's our focus, trying to get eight wins in a row. Shea is already called as a top player of uh, this World Cup. You also consider that? Oh, yeah. Um, if you look at the All-NBA in, in the NBA, um, there's, out of the 15 selections, there's only two guys that are here in the World Cup. It's him and Luca. So may, maybe he's not better than Luca, but out, out of those guys on the USA, I think he's better than anyone on the USA team. Um, maybe not Luka Doncic. So yeah, of course, he's one of the best players in, in the world. He probably, if Canada goes very deep, makes the semis, make the finals, there's a decent chance he's the MVP. So we'll see. Uh, maybe they lose in the quarters or lose in the next round. But um, I think he's at least one of the two or three best players at this tournament. I think Canada is a top two team in the world, but I'm not betting money on gold at the Olympics. You know, like it depends who's going to play for the U.S. You know, Spain isn't what it used to be. What do you think? Like, ah, it, it depends on uh, the roster US. of U.S., of yeah. course, of course, because here, as we see in the World Cup, the, the roster is not as we used to in the Olympics. Right. So if the American dudes play, um, then I think Canada's playing for a silver medal. And if the Americans do don't play, dudes don't play, what, what a final it will be, yes? <laughs> yeah, you got it. There are miles to go before we get there. But uh, I, look, I, in Canada, there's an expression, own the podium. It started when Ke uh, Vancouver got the bid to host the 2010 Winter Olympics. They said, we can't just be a participating in Olympics anymore. We have to invest a lot of money in our programs, in our athletes, in our federations, in our structures so that we can go own the podium and win medals. And Canada basketball has had a goal to reach the podium in 2024 in men's and women's basketball. A goal to reach the podium in 2028 in men's and women's basketball. And they're on the trajectory to do that. But now you got to go do it. Fernandes vairāk kārt atzinis, ka cīņai pret Latviju gatavojas ļoti nopietni, lai arī nodrošinātu vieta nākamajā kārtā. Viņš īpaši uzsver Latvijas līdzutēju atbalstu. Pēc spēles pret Latviju centīsimies viņu palabot, ka Latvijā ir nepilni divi, nevis trīs miljonu iedzīvotāju. Very well coached, a guy that I know personally and I have a lot of respect for him uh, and with all their fans here, uh, three million people in the country with 3,000 fans. It's the same as this Canada will have three million fans here if you do your math. So very, very excited. Very good players. I know a lot of those guys, uh, you know, from the point guard who played in my, in my hometown growing up to the two brothers that played in Spain and the NBA, um, Roland Smith, who played in Fuel Labrada for many years, and I've always thought that he was an NBA player. So all those guys are a very good team, and, uh, you know, we're, we'll be ready for them. We have the chance to do our jobs because of people like them that support their country, that travel, that bring the energy into the gym. So if every country could do the same, this would be, this is great already, it would be beyond amazing. So I appreciate what they do for the, for the game of basketball, for the FIBA World Cup, and, and I'll be very excited to play in the gym with all Latvian fans. I would like to say good luck, but I won't. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I'll, I'll say for you guys, good luck, except for tomorrow. So. Good luck in the second round as well, and uh, if, if it's not Canada that makes it to the quarters, I, I hope you guys do. So uh, thanks for having me.